Welcome back to the shop. My name's Adam. This is going to be Saturday Night Special, episode 134. So this week we're going to finish off our machine work on the first tow adjuster right here for uh, Doug Hanchard. We got the uh, the steel made out of 4130 that I finished that up this week. And I'm going to share that with you doing the uh, right hand threads and then milling the, the hex on it. So we got that. And I got a little bit of viewer mail. We've had a couple gifts that's come in that I'd like to share with you and show. And I got a little update on some uh, barbecue that I did over the holiday weekend. That was pretty cool on Facebook. There was a lot of guys out there showing their barbecue and and uh, a couple of guys kind of getting into it. They uh, they were inspired, so they were sharing some pictures. So I got a short little clip of that of what I did for the holiday weekend. And uh, I want to. Give a thanks to everybody that purchased their Do You Indicate Bro t-shirt. I, I had a nice successful sale there. And uh, hopefully by the time that you guys watch this, uh, production will be started on those shirts and you should start seeing them next week arrive. So again, thank you everybody for your support on that. Again, it's a, it's a, it's a great way to uh, support the, the shop here, me and the, the shop. and. Uh, my efforts out here in creating these YouTube videos. So, I would like your opinion. Uh, I told you that I was wanting to release the first Shop Life t-shirt, which was the Shop Life welder, because there was people that had asked about that one also. Uh, maybe get a little bit of feedback from you on this video. Would uh, you, some of you guys still wanting that, that shirt? And I have another design that I'm, that I'm working on that I'd like to release here pretty soon as well totally new design it's going to be sort of like a uh, paid homage to booth machine shop and I'm really excited about showing you that and uh, getting that one out there because I'm 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 ready to get my hands on one so I can wear it around town myself so that'll be coming pretty soon but again thanks everybody for the uh, support there with purchasing the t-shirts so I had a viewer mail come in the other day at work and I do not know who sent this viewer mail and there was an address on it, but it was no name, so I'm not sure who it is. Whoever sent this, you know, you can if you want to be known, just drop a comment and let me know. But they sent a couple of these books that they found. This one here is called The Republic of Barbecue. Stories Beyond the Brisket. And it looks like a pretty interesting book to read with lots of cool pictures and stuff in there. And then we got another one out here called The Prophets of Smoked Meat. And it also looks like a really nice book. A lot of, lot of really cool info and uh, cool pictures in it from barbecue joints all over the state of Texas. So some nice books. I am looking forward to reading that. I, I did finish off my uh, Aaron Franklin book, but I continue to go back through it because it's a, it's a really good book, guys. If, uh, if you have any interest in smoked meat or any of the Aaron Franklin recipes, I suggest check that book out. Um, I put a link in my uh, description there in the video that you can click on take it to Amazon. It's like 17 bucks for the book. But yeah, I keep going through that one and, and trying uh, barbecue recipes. And then he's got some other sides in there. And just uh, I keep going over it on how he, his technique on cooking a brisket. But anyway, thanks for the books right here. I really appreciate that. And I look forward to reading them. So I got a couple more viewer gifts right here. I want to pull the camera down here and give you a little better shot of them, all right? So this here come in from Richard Graham out of Drummond, Oklahoma. And I tried to find his email and to go back through there and read what he had said. And I could not find his email, but he was telling me about this oil and it's called Slick 56. I guess it's produced by Clements Firearms. We've also got a, a few uh, stickers there. So we'll put one over there on the cabinet. But he was telling me that this is a really, really good oil to use, I, I believe, as like a protectant, you know, for, for metals. Uh, people use it on their guns, and I believe he suggested we could use this also on precision tooling around the shop, you know, micrometers and, and that kind of stuff, you know, our, our instruments and our tooling. So, uh, Richard, you know, if you see this, you can drop a comment there in the, uh, in the video and let us know again what you were suggesting on the proper use for the slick 56 but he highly recommended it and he said he wanted to send some along so there it is thank you very much richard so i got another handmade gift in from my viewer scott lundy he's from ohay california 
and Scott is known as the Hackmaster. So to kind of refresh your memory on the Hackmaster, we'll move that aside for a sec. This handmade oiler was made by Scott Lundy to represent, or it's, it's like a uh, copy of an Eagle number 66 oiler. And what was really amazing about this is that I remember he did not actually have an Eagle 66 to copy, but he went off of pictures and stuff off the internet whenever he made this but he put my name in the top of it so that was uh, recently showed that to us in the uh, the new display cabinet inside the house and yes it needs a good buffing it's starting to tarnish a little bit from my handling of it so we'll get that buffed out pretty soon all right so that was what he had made we call this the hackmaster oil can so he has made another gift here in this uh, indicator box i'll tell you what he says here uh, hey Adam, I really enjoy watching your show and I'm sure your dad and granddad have a big smile on their faces looking down from you from heaven. Here is the Hackmaster style soft stop for the lathe, complete with disposable indicator. Enjoy the Hackmaster. So let's check out this awesome little tool. Again, another handmade tool made by Scott. So what we have here is a magnetic back that he has machined himself and he's got some of these magnets in there. And what it looks like to me is that you can set this, you know, you got your V-way that, you, that we normally set this on. And so it's got a fence there that you can perfectly, you know, perfectly line that up so that your stem of your indicator is in line with the bedways. So that's pretty cool, you know, because typically all the ones we use, we, you know, we just stick it on there and we just eyeball it to where it looks like it's square. And typically that's going to get the job done, you know, but that's really nice. You know, that's something that I've never thought about before. And, you know, I'd like to go over there and see how it fits. I, I have not put it on the machine yet. So let's, uh, let's go over there and uh, see it fit on the machine real quick. But Scott, you did an awesome job again, man. I really appreciate it. This is a nice tool and it will be used around here. You know, in this, this particular indicator, you can get this from MSC. So whenever these old cheap indicators go out, they're like 10 bucks, you know, you take it off, you throw it away and you put another one on there. So let's go test fit it real quick. All right, we're over here on the Victor and I went ahead and wiped the ways clean there and we wiped this off. So again, there's what it looks like. Got it pulled down nice and square on the V-way and the magnets are pretty strong. You can take that thing and just slide it right on up. Magnets are a little, little strong there, but that's sweet. I like that. And see your, your dial right here, the uh, arm of the indicator is gonna be in line, you know, parallel with the ways, so very cool Scott I like it that's an awesome gift thank you very much man you're gonna be going into business because I guarantee you there's gonna be a bunch of people wanting these now <laughs> but looks like a nice little shop project for all you uh, home guys out there so I'm gonna go ahead and finish up this steel piece that I've been working on for Doug Hanchard and this is the the uh, like a tie rod adjuster uh, toe adjuster that's the sample piece there, and that's what we're making. This is 4130 steel with a 5 8 18 left-hand thread, and we're going to put a 5 8 18 right-hand thread on this side. All right, just a Labor Day project. We're going to get finished up here. All right, two inches. So like two and a sixteenth. Oh, so here's something I'll uh, <laughs> share with you. The uh, the power just went out for a little bit, and I was I was out there waiting on the uh, the crew to come and fix the uh, the jacks out there. So here's that old indicator that I've used for a long time. This goes way back to my old shop. 
This was the original indicator and the original magnet that you know that it come with. Probably got it from MSC. The indicator still works fine. You just can't read it hardly because of all the chips on it. But that's the beauty of these little cheap Chinese made indicators that they don't cost much money. You know, and once you get the life out of them, you're not you're out what ten dollars maybe, you know, and you throw it away and you get another one. So I had this one put up. It's just another one that we had in the shop and I had ended up putting it away and it was dirty. So I cleaned it and polished the crystal on it. Just like new, man. what I suspected. I'm actually pushing it back in the collet. I didn't have it quite tight enough. Gonna make our undercut about 75 thousandths deep. All right, we're going to go ahead and cut our 18 threads per inch. So we're on CD2 on the quick change here. All right, we got a zero. Got my cross slide set to zero. We're going to come and touch off. Got the compound set at 30 degrees. And again, I'll show this trick again. Nice little uh, formula. 0.75 divided by your threads per inch. I call it the pitch. So we're cutting 18. All right, so 0 0.041. So around 41, 42 thousandths is the theoretically the depth that you're going to be feeding this compound in. So we'll just do a scratch pass as always and make sure that we're on our right pitch. Yeah, that's good right there. I found that pitch gauge, I believe it was last summer at the flea market. It was a little rusty and I cleaned it up. This is become one of my favorite pitch gauges to use. It's more than right, made over in Sheffield, England. That's just a nice pitch gauge. Carbide inserts a little bit, it's a little bit dull, but this material I believe is kind of gummy. It's trying to really roll up a, a burr as it cuts. And we're gonna use some cutting oil. Trying to pull the uh, brush out of my hand there. And we're cutting an even thread here, so I'll hit any line.
think I'm just about there. I'm gonna go ahead and file the file the threads and knock off the top of the burr there. Just lightly file it. Get that last thread that rolls over. And the front corner. That's a real nice close fit right there. I like it. I'm going to just do some final polishing on it right there. And I was trying to give you guys another little shot of the lathe here. Uh, most of you that that watch this stuff like to see how you know somebody uses the controls on the lathe so I'm always trying to mix it up and give you an extra uh, shot of the uh, operation. I'm gonna go ahead and get the hex milled on this piece and this is a 7 8 hex and I'll show it I'll show it to you. 7 8 would be 0.875 And even though Doug had in his email, he told me that they use a 15 16 wrench, this is 7 8, so we're making it this. So you could use a 7 8 or a 15. 15 is probably, you know, it's a little more loose on the hex whenever they're trying to make quick adjustments during racing or something, I would imagine. So we're going to use this face mill right here. This uses CNMG 430 inserts, and I just swapped them all out. I had let I had let Brad Jacob bar this and uh, Brad burned up all my corners on it. That's okay. <laughs> I went ahead and swapped it out so we got good cutting edges there. So what we'll do is uh, we got that at one inch. A little under one inch right there with these calipers. So we'll kind of sneak up on it here. We'll take a We'll take a cut on one side and we'll flip it over and we'll mic it and we'll try to get we'll try to hit 875 if we can. I'm going to bring it up 55 thousandths. Take it and just flip it all the way over. Doesn't really matter where it's at. I just kind of flushed it on the end of the vise here. see what we got looks like I did pretty good we're 879 so we're only four thousandths off okay so really that just means we need two thousandths I'll go ahead and I'll bring it up another two thousandths make another make another pass 
and we'll go on around with it. We're at 874 and a half. That'll work. Make sure everything's locked good on the quill. I'm going to take the handle off the knee. Now we'll go ahead and flip it the other four times. Ain't got a lot of room to work right here. <laughs> that corner it's leaving just a little flat there all right I think we got one more Feels like chips. Man, them chips are hot. I'm slinging back here on my arm. Okay. See how close I maintained it. I'm at 874 on that measurement right there. So we did good. There's a better look at that face mill that I used. Viewer had given me this last year, and I believe the it was on maybe on Amp, eBay. I think it was eBay. A company called Discotech sells this. Very good melon head to uh, use the other corners on a CNMG insert. So now I'm going to go ahead and take it out of the collet block. We'll go over to the lathe and we'll hit a chamfer on that back side there. Somebody had left a comment here not long ago. I think it was today, something about... Uh, it's funny how people on the other side of the world, we call them wrenches, and then over there they, they say they call them spanners. To me, this is a spanner wrench. This, this is what I, it's, it's labeled as a spanner wrench, and that's how we know it. This is a wrench. This being a boxed-in wrench, but we don't call these spanners. We call this a spanner. Whenever you're hooking the OD of a nut like that with a pin or a, or a slot, or you're taking a piston off that's got two holes drilled in the end of it and you have a spanner wrench that looks like a V that goes in there and adjusts. Now, that's, I guess I was just thinking of that because that comment came through earlier on the channel. So we're gonna go ahead and loosen this uh, spanner nut. Bam, there it is. 
Let's go to the lathe and dress up that burr. All right, normally whenever I'm chamfering a hexagon, I usually just use a threading tool and just cut a 30 degree angle on the side. It about matches up with what a normal manufactured nut looks like. already got it there and I usually cut it until the angle cuts into the flats yeah we're gonna do that side too it's not quite cut in cut into the flats yet There we go. I think we'll go over to our new, it's still got a sharp edge there that needs to be deburred. I think we're gonna use that new deburring wheel over on the Miller's Falls grinder. And then we'll dress this up too. That looks good right there, but it's just, it's got a little bit of a roughness to it just because of the feeding it across there kind of fast, I guess. Oh yeah, man, that works good. I'm just barely pushing into the wheel. I'm, I'm trying not to push in at all and just let it, the touching of it do the, the cleaning action. I can say that that right there was a little easier than trying to take a file and do it. I like that. Okay. I'm gonna hit the end of that thread just a little bit. Well, there you go, Doug. There's one steel adjuster for you to go out and destroy on the racetrack first time you take the car out. Nah, I'm just kidding, man. You'll win the race. <laughs> All right, we got the smoker going early today. Got the fire going. And we're doing some more whole chickens. Got a couple that we're going to be eating for dinner. And then I got two extra that I'm giving to mom. And she's going to make some smoked chicken salad out of them. A little bit of Labor Day smoking. Two fifty great temp, and we got the meat at one hundred and fifty three. Doing good with our wood. Brisket and ribs. Well, there's the result to my very first brisket that I've ever cooked. It is not a full brisket. It was only a, a part of a, a brisket. I believe it's just part of the point of the brisket. But I seen it and uh, I had to get it. So I think that it turned out pretty good for being my first one is pretty tender and I did try a couple little pieces just trying to see how it, how it looks whenever you pull it apart it looks like it's it looks pretty good to me 
I know you don't want it where it just falls apart on you, but you want to build it just whenever you pull on it to be really tender. That's yeah, looking pretty good. Well, I'm ready to eat some of it. So I just wanted to share with you. I'm pretty pretty excited about it as being my first one. I've been doing a lot of reading and research on it, trying to get it right. So I think, well, it may not be perfect, but my first one looks like a success anyway. <laughs>